right, today I'm going to be presenting the work from the 2024 AAS GNC conference. Um, it's titled Prescribed Motion Dynamics for Spacecraft Solar Array Deployment. And I'd like to thank my co-authors, um, Dr. Cody Allard and Dr. Humphrey Schaub for their support in this work. So the motivation behind this work is the continual evolution of space mission concepts and the resulting increasingly ambitious science objectives for these missions. And this results in extensive advancements that are required for the components that we're seeing mounted onto our spacecraft. And some examples here are articulating appendages, robotic arms, gimbaled motion platforms, and the focus of this work, time varying deploying solar arrays. So just some examples here, um, illustrating these new advancements in components that we're seeing mounted on our spacecraft. We have the Lucy mission to the Trojan asteroids, which had two ultra flex uh, solar arrays that deployed using a motor driven lanyard and they need to articulate to track the sun. And then we have the DART mission to the uh, Didymos asteroid system. That was the first mission to utilize these ultra flex rollout solar arrays. And then finally, we have the Lunar Gateway that is proposed to host the Canada Arm 3, which will have an eight and a half meter long robotic arm that will assist with orbital um, servicing and docking of modules onto the gateway and also assists with astronaut spacewalks. So these are just some examples of the increasing complexities um, of different components on our spacecraft. So the focus of this work is spacecraft solar array deployment that is driven by prescribed motion. So in this work, um, our spacecraft has two symmetric solar arrays and each array is modeled by a collection of N rigid prescribed bodies. So in this figure on the right, um, in previous work, we derived the equations of motion for a single rigid body seen in green um, relative to our spacecraft hub. So in this work, we're showing how we can expand this um, uh, capability and exploit the um, modularity of the Basilisk astrodynamic software um, that I'll be talking about later um, to be able to append any number of bodies to our spacecraft. So what is prescribed motion? Um, prescribed motion involves the explicit definition of a rigid body states over a given period of time. So the states of our prescribed body are kinematically profiled relative to a frame that's fixed to our hub. So in this figure, it's this M frame. And it's important to note that the states of this prescribed body um, are completely independent from the motion of the other components on our spacecraft. And this results in a one-way coupling between the dynamics of our prescribed body and the motion of our spacecraft hub and the other non-prescribed bodies on the spacecraft. So in this figure here, um, we can see the on the right side, the prescribed states of our body, um, the translational and rotational states, are all written relative to this mount frame M. So in previous work, um, we derived the translational and, and rotational equations of motion shown here um, for a single rigid body connected to our spacecraft hub. Um, and so this work is really showing how we can add any number of bodies to our hub um, using these equations of motion. Um, however, we need to profile the motion of each of these bodies um, relative to our hub. So this work um, illustrates two main uh, prescribed motion solar array deployment scenarios. The first is a rotational scenario that's inspired by Lucy. And the second is a telescoping scenario that is inspired by DART. So for our rotational scenario, um, all of the array elements begin stacked together in a wedge shape um, in this upper left figure that is the stowed configuration. Um, and then we can see that array one fully deploys um, before we start deploying array two. Um, so the initial deployment phase for array one 
has all of the elements rotating downwards um, all together in that wedge. And then in the main um, deployment phase for the arrays, the array elements unfurl. And then we can see that um, occurring as well for array two. And in our um, telescoping case, we see the stowed configuration here on the right. And then the initial deployment phase for each array has a pure rotation of all the elements upwards. And then during the main deployment phase here, all of the elements purely translate away from our hub. And then we see the same thing for array two. So next to really illustrate the generality and um, reconfigurability of these modules that we have previously um, implemented in software, we wanted to show two different types of the main um, unfurling of our arrays. So on the left side, um, in the upper left, we have a rigid um, rotational case where all of the array elements move together as one and they sequentially lock into place until at the final time only that last array element is moving and then locks into place. And this contrasts with the lanyard case where all of the array elements um, were trying to um, mock a, um, a string pulling all of those elements out so they all um, have different acceleration profiles. Um, and then all of those array elements lock into place together at the final time. And then on the right side, we see the rigid um, telescoping case. And here, all the array elements are one by one pushed out from our hub. So um, in contrast to the rigid rotational case where um, each of the elements locks into place uh, sequentially, here, um, all of the array elements lock into place together at the final time because they're being pushed away from the hub. And then finally, our lanyard uh, telescoping case again, we're trying to um, pull all of those elements by a string so they all um, start to move um, together at the beginning of that main unfurlment phase and they all lock into place together at the final time. And I'm not going to be going into any of the math for how we are profiling um, the motion of these elements because we um, discussed that in previous work. Um, however, essentially for the rigid cases shown here, we apply a bang-bang acceleration profile with a coast period of zero acceleration in between um, those um, accelerations. So for each array element that locks into place, we apply that acceleration profile. Um, however, in the lanyard cases, the entire um, unfurlment of the arrays, all of the elements are in a coast period. So we only apply that bang bang acceleration at the very start of the unfurlment and the very end. So next I just wanted to show all the frames that are required um, to simulate these scenarios. So on the left side, we see the rotational stowed um, configuration and we're profiling the motion of our array element F frames relative to our array mount frames. So in the stowed configuration, we can see that um, those frames uh, coincide. However, um, after the elements initially um, rotate downwards, um, we need to translate those array frames outwards to the center of mass of those arrays so that during the main unfurlment of each array, we only need to use a one degree of freedom um, rotation. So we don't have any translational motion of our array element frames relative to our array not frames. And then we should just also note that um, the entire uh, deployment of both of our rotational cases um, is about our second hub axis. And then um, on the right side here, we can see that the initial um, rotation of our elements is also about our second hub axis. Um, however, during our translation um, away from our hub, all of the elements are moving along our um, B1 axis of our hub. 
So next, I just wanted to talk about how we um, implement these scenarios in software in a modular way. So we um, previously implemented the prescribed motion equations of motion um, that I showed earlier in the Basilisk Astrodynamics uh, simulation software. Um, and it's developed jointly by the AVS lab and the um, Laboratory for Atmospheric Space Physics at CU. Um, and so essentially for each array element, we need to have an instance of each of these modules here. So the equations of motion that I showed previously um, are hosted in this blue prescribed motion uh, dynamic sim uh, module. And we need to feed in the prescribed states of each element um, into the right-hand side of those equations. And so in order to do that, we connect a translational um, kinematic profiler module in yellow and a rotational module as well. And so for each element, we need an instance of each of these modules. So essentially um, we are not um, developing any new um, capabilities here in Basilisk uh, specifically. We're trying to illustrate how we can use um, the existing modules in Basilisk um, to be able to create um, different, more um, complicated actuated components on our spacecraft. So here are some uh, parameters for each scenario. Um, on the left-hand side, we have the shared um, parameters here. I think it's just important to point out that um, we choose the time um, for that initial um, rotation of each array here. And then we also choose the time for that main unfurlment of the arrays. And then we also um, choose the ramp time, which is essentially just the time that we apply our um, accelerations. And so for the entire rest of each of these um, uh, periods of time, all of the array elements are coasting with zero acceleration. Um, except, sorry, um, except for the um, rigid cases where we are constantly applying that um, bang bang acceleration profile for um, each um, sequential rotation of the arrays. So for the rotational scenarios, we have 10 elements per array with a radius of each array of um, three meters. And then for our uh, telescoping cases, we have five elements per array, and each element is a length of two meters. So each array um, fully deploys to 10 meters. And then here are our results for the rotational cases. So for our rigid case, we have array one and array two angles above, and then the angle rates um, down here. And then we didn't show the acceleration profiles um, here just for the sake of space. And so we can see here that um, all of the array one um, elements move together in that initial um, deployment phase here. And then after all of the array elements uh, rotate down, they start to unfurl. So we can see all of the array elements um, sequentially locking into place until at the final time, um, only that last element is moving. And then we can see that while this is happening with array one, array two is not moving. And then we see that um, opposite behavior for array two, because it's unfurling about the negative um, B2 axis of our hub. And then next, it's um, really important to study the motion um, of our hub as a result of the um, the motion of other objects on our spacecraft. So here um, we can see the hub's inertial angular velocity um, and the hub inertial attitude in um, MRPs. And then we have our hub inertial um, uh, position down here. And so we can see that the hub is responding accordingly to the unfurlment of each array. Uh, we can especially see here in our hub rate plot 
um, that because the arrays for array one, um, it rotates uh, positively about the B2 axis, we see the hub um, moving opposite to that about our um, second B2 axis as well. And then during the array two um, unfurlment, we also see that opposite behavior because array two is unfurling about the negative B2 axis. Um, and then all of these jumps um, for our hub rate are a result of applying that um, bang bang acceleration at the start and end of each um, rotation of each array. So we can see that the hub starts and ends at a state of rest. Um, and we can um, conclude here that our hub is responding accordingly to the motion of our array elements. And next for our lanyard case, um, we see also initially all of the array elements um, rotating together here. However, during the main unfurlment phase, all of the array elements start moving um, and they lock into place at the final time. And then we can see here that same behavior for array two. And then here's our hub motion. Um, it's interesting really to note that our hub rate during that main unfurlment phase for each array is much smoother. Um, and this is because we're only applying those accelerations at the very start and the very end um, of, that, of those unfurlment um, phases. So we can also see here that our hub is responding accordingly to the unfurlment of these arrays. And so next for our um, telescoping rigid case, which is a bit more interesting because we have a rotation and translation for each array, um, we can see for array one, all of the array elements initially um, rotate upwards, so they're rotating about the um, negative B2 axis, and then all of the array elements start to translate along the positive B1 axis of our hub. Um, and then we can see here that all of the array elements are being pushed out away from our hub, so they all lock into place at the final time as we're expecting. And then we see the same behavior for array two. And so next we can see the impact on our hub here. Um, we can again see these jumps in our hub rate due to applying those accelerations um, for each element. And then it's interesting to see this um, bottom right plot where because our array elements are mainly um, translating for array one about the um, positive V1 axis, we can see that the hub moves um, opposite to that up uh, primarily along our B1 axis. Um, and then for array two, the array elements translate about the negative B1 axis. So we can see here that the hub is moving opposite to that as well. Um, and this is the motion of our hub um, point B. So during the um, rotation upwards of, of each array, we also see some uh, motion about our um, B3 axis as well. And then finally, for our telescoping lanyard case, we can see again that both of the arrays initially um, rotate, followed by um, each of the elements moving with a different acceleration profile, and they all snap into place at that final time as well for both arrays. And then here we can see the motion of our hub again. Uh, we can see that the hub angular velocity is much smoother here, which is very similar to our rotational lanyard case because we're only applying those accelerations at the start and end of the unfurlment of the arrays. And again, we can see that same behavior for our hub's attitude and the um, position of our hub uh, responding accordingly to the motion of our array elements. And so I just wanted to illustrate um, really clearly the, uh, the difference between the rigid and the lanyard cases. So here in the lanyard case, we're kind of pulling a strain on all of the elements. So they all start unfurling uh, together and they all snap into place at the final time. Whereas for our rigid case, all of the elements rotate as one together and they sequentially lock into place.
And then we see the same thing here for our um, telescoping scenario, where for our rigid case, we can see each of the array elements has the same spacing here because one by one, they're being pushed out away from our hub. However, in our lanyard cases, we can see all the array frames gradually begin to move um, farther and farther apart until they all lock into place at the final time here. So we're kind of pulling a string on these elements. So in conclusion, a rapid generalized method is presented to simulate prescribed spacecraft components consisting of multiple connected rigid elements. And we um, illustrated four distinct solar array um, deployment scenarios that we implemented in Basilisk. Um, and this was really to show the generality and reconfigurability of the previously implemented modules in Basilisk. And then looking at this figure here on the right, um, we're plotting the magnitude of our hub rate for all four um, cases here. And we can see that the rotational cases had a greater impact on our hub motion, especially our hub rate here. Um, we can see that for all the cases, our hub rate um, remains very small, um, which is great. Um, however, for our rotational cases, we can see that the hub rate um, is generally larger um, during all the phases of the unfurlment of each array. And then um, in the future, we really want to investigate the impact of the array um, unfurlments on our hub um, uh, motion more by varying the um, time of the array um, unfurling, the different acceleration profiles, the um, ramp time for the accelerations, um, and the um, size and shape and different um, properties of our arrays. So with that, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, please um, feel free to reach out to me at this email. Thank you.